Welcome to Naresh Technologies, I am Bangaraju and in this video we will just been discussing about how to use the join method in multi threading. So, this is a part 4 of uh, the multi threading videos. So, in the previous uh, video I have just been demonstrating about the thread start delegate and the parameterized thread start delegate ok. So, by using this how to pass how to pass uh, methods uh, as a parameters to the threads. So, what I explained in the previous video. So, here we will just understand about the join method that is available under the thread class or the use of the join method in the thread class. See, let us write a simple uh, program, some simple functions here like uh, earlier we have been tried up static void test 1 for int i is equals to 0 or i is equals to 1 i less than or equals to 25 and i plus plus console dot right line test 1 plus i yeah three methods what I am just defining uh, come to main static void main and right now the execution starts from the main method and there is a main thread which is going to start the execution. So, just I am writing console dot right line main thread started ok and now I wanted to create three threads to call the three methods thread t1 is equals to new thread. So, last class uh, in the last video we discussed either we can pass the thread start delegate or directly we can start pass the method name here and when you pass the method name here it internally will create you the thread start delegate instance and will be taking as a parameter ok fine thread 2 thread 3 calling the three methods and here I am writing console dot right line main thread exiting and now if you run this thread 1 will start the execution of the method test 1 and once the execution is completed here let us add console dot right line thread 1 is exiting and the second method is executed by the second thread thread 2 exiting and thread 3 exiting and at the same way on the top we will write as thread 1 is starting thread 2 is starting and at the same time thread 3 is starting. Now, if we run this code let me open the project property window and we will set this as a startup class ok fine and uh, run this when you run this yeah. when we run this if you just watch it main thread started main thread exiting. So, both the two message printed main thread started main thread is exiting why the other things did not execute because we have forgotten to call the start method t1 dot start t2 dot start and t3 dot start. So, like this we are just going to call all the three in this place fine execute the code. So, first execution starts with see there main thread starting and main thread once it started the execution and created the first thread and started it and the thread 1 is starting the execution and the execution is going on and meanwhile what happened is in the given time thread 1 could complete the work and thread 1 exited and also main thread exited. Now, thread 3 started and thread 3 is executing and then thread 3 is also exited and thread 2 started and thread 2 also completed work. Actually, it is not sharing the time means that depends upon the operating system we will not get the same output every time. So, let us run one more time. So, in the given time it is not uh, just sharing the time 
let us go for increasing the size. We will go with some 50, run again. Now, thread 1 started executing, thread 2 started and also thread 3 started, they are sharing the time and executing, okay. they are utilizing the time now and that is not the point here. First main thread started, created thread 1 and given the control to thread 1 and afterward thread 2, thread 3, they will share the time and execute. Thread 1 completed, thread 2 started, meanwhile somewhere main thread exited and thread 2 and thread 3, these two are sharing the time and trying to run the code, okay, run the code and finally thread 2 exited here, thread 3 exited. But the thing I want to show you here is main thread did not wait until all the threads complete the work. See main thread is exiting first, not in the first, in the middle. Okay, If I run again, I may get a different output. So when exactly is the main thread going to execute from the code will not be in your control. But once the main thread starts the execution, at any point of time, once its work is completed, it can exit from the program. See main thread exited now and meanwhile thread 1 exited and uh, thread 2, thread 3 are exiting in the last. So, what is the problem here is main thread should not be allowed to exit from the program in the middle, means the execution completely started by the main thread and uh, this main thread only should be ending the execution also, means it should not be allowed to get away from the program in the middle. But what is it doing? It is giving the control to thread 1, thread 2, thread 3 and it is going out of the program in the middle. So, I do not want to allow the main thread to go out of the program in the middle like this. If you want the main thread to wait until, until all the threads are completing their work, what you require to do is, you are required to call join. So, t1 dot join, t2 dot join and t3 dot join. So, if I call join, if I call join, actually we are calling here. So, who will execute this code? Main thread. Main thread is going to execute the code. Means, we are calling join. So, the main thread cannot exit from the program until all the child threads are finishing their job. Until all the child threads are finishing the job, main thread cannot get away from the program. Watch it and watch the difference in output. And if you notice the output here, main thread exited last, main thread did not exit first, main thread exited last, main thread started and main thread exited last. So, what happens when you call join? Join the calling thread cannot exit from the program until the all the other threads in the program are exiting from the program. Means, you called join on T1, until T1 exits, main thread cannot execute. Why I am talking main thread here is, who is calling join? Main thread is calling join now. Main thread is calling join. Why main thread? You are written the code in the main and this method is executed by the main thread. So, who is calling join means? Main is calling join. So, because the main thread is calling join here, until all the other threads are exiting from the program, main thread is not allowed to exit from the program. Watch the same. Meanwhile, somewhere I want to add a sleep. Somewhere I want to add a sleep. After completing the execution, I want to add a sleep here. Thread dot sleep for 5 seconds. Thread dot sleep for 5 seconds. Run again. This 5 seconds also main thread is going to wait. See there, if you watch it, now that 5 seconds, the main thread is waiting. See, thread 1 exited, until then the main thread did not execute. So, this is the advantage of calling the join. So, we need to call join. Generally, we call this particular join on main. The reason is to make it wait until all the child threads are finishing their execution. So, if all the child threads are finishing their execution, so what will happen now? The main thread will exit in the last. So, first all the sub threads or the child threads will exit and finally the main thread exits. And this join as an overloaded construct, it has an overloaded method, I am sorry, it has an overloaded method. You can just pass the time out here, 
what is the timeout? The timeout is say I am just going to give some timeout, some 3000 milliseconds. So, main thread will wait for 3000 milliseconds for T1 to exit from the program. Meanwhile, if T1 exits, okay, if it does not exit, main thread will exit, okay, watch it. So, if you notice it, main thread exited first. Why main thread exited first? The reason is thread 1 is waiting for 5 seconds, but main thread wait time is only 3 seconds what are given. Until and unless the child thread is executed, main thread is not waiting for it. Why? Because we have given a time period. If you do not give this time period, if you do not give this time period, it will wait until the child thread exits, but now it is not going to wait for it. Okay, because we are given a time period. So, we can make it to wait until a specific time period either by specifying the milliseconds here. If it do not specify the milliseconds, it is going to wait until the T1 is going to exit from the program. Means, here there is no time bound. There is no time bound here. But if you give a time means, there is a time bound which is going to be present at that location. So, that is the difference what we have between the join with parameter and a join without parameter. Okay. Thank you for watching the video. For more videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Naresh IT. Thank you.